This is the way the world is. Not how it should be or could be, but is. High's kicky design, top kick interior, tech is a kick, kick in available stereo, kick ass pricing. Lowe's soft kick driver train, more kick than bite in the corners, should be more of a kick. In the past few months, the teen C crossover market has seen Ford bring the dinky eco sport to North America. High and I introduce the new Kona, Kia continue to issue a flood of a diminutive soul, and Honda's HRV become a mainstay of that brand. Small, not very powerful, tech thick, SUV like things are what the world wants. Rip and grip don't sell like q with good smartphone integration. Nissan's latest pint size crossover is the 2018 Kicks. It effectively replaces the Duke, which was an early entrant in this segment. The Kicks, continuing the industry-wide naming tradition of turning a verb into a noun while adding its own nutty pluralized twist, may be among the best of the breed. Expressively kind of humble Nissan launched the Kicks back in the summer of 2016 around the frenzy of the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. In fact, the initial design work was done at Nissan's studio in Brazil with burnishing taking place at Nissan Design America in San Diego and the final work ahead of production done in Japan. The Kicks is being assembled at Nissan plants in Brazil, China, Malaysia, and Mexico, it's the Mexico plant that will serve up all North American Kicks. For all that cross-continental conspiring, the design holds together with plenty of character lines through the sheet's metal, giant taillights reminiscent of the departed from America Duke and lots of interesting color schemes that include two-tone treatments reminiscent of a Mini Cooper or a Star Wars Stormtrooper, depending on hue choices. The Kicks is significantly cheaper than the outgoing Duke that it takes the place of. For those scoring at home, this makes six Nissan-branded SUVs and crossovers we can buy, with the Titanic Armada at the high end and the Kicks now anchoring the line at the bottom. Kicks prices start at $18,965 for the Kicks S. The mainstream SV begins at $20,665, with the top off the line SR at $21,265. Even the base S includes automated emergency braking and forward collision warning, along with a 7.0 inch touchscreen in the center of the dashboard. Both the SV and the SR get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, with the SR's equipment list also including LED headlights and a rear spoiler that better finishes the appearance. The SR also gets a 360-degree camera system. If you hit a cat while backing this thing up, it's because you wanted to hit that cat. Maybe surprisingly, a sunroof isn't offered by Nissan, so get a Sawzall and get busy. Aside from paint color, the only option is a $1,000 package on the SR that includes heated front seats and a Bose sound system, which actually seemed pretty good on our brief listen. For a vehicle that is self-consciously chasing an ideal of expressive style, it doesn't look that self-conscious. That in mind, this is a very trendy design that may not age well. It may not be destined to become the PT loser of 2024, but timeless it isn't. However, Nissan isn't chasing buyers looking at their last new car purchase but people making their first. Simple under the expressive while the exterior styling is trendy, Nissan has tailored the interior more traditionally. There's plenty of piano black and straightforward controls with the dash built around a gliding wing theme that's actually elegant. On the higher trims, the main instrumentation consists of an analog speedometer to the right and a digital display on the left that represents a tachometer. What's best about the interior, however, is that it's a very usable and roomy space for a car this small. Backseat passengers won't be stretching out much, but they won't feel as if they should gnaw off their legs at the knees, either. It's a surprisingly efficient cabin for four, but don't push it beyond that. There's 25 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row bench seat, which folds in a 6040 split. This is a vehicle that's 169.1 inches long over a 103.1 inch wheelbase. That's less than an inch longer overall than a Mazda CX-3, and the Nissan feels as if it is more practical space. The Kicks also is 7.8 inches longer overall than the Ford EcoSport and is vastly more comfortable and useful. Modest, 
too in terms of powertrain, the Kix is mostly Versa. That means it's a conventional small front drive box, our wheel drive isn't available, which could either scare buyers into the slightly larger Rogue Sport or to another dealership entirely, powered by Nissan's dock, 16 valve HR16 to 1.6 liter inland for Blessed with variable valve timing but lacking the latest direct injection technology, it runs a soft 9.8 to 1 compression ratio and makes 125 horsepower at 5,800 revolutions per minute and 115 lbft of torque at 4,000 revolutions per minute. Those aren't big numbers, and, well, the only transmission offered is a continuously variable automatic. Low output and CVTs usually mean droning frustration. The good news is this, Nissan has massaged its Xtronic CVT enough so that it has simulated shifts that aren't completely awful. They're not as crisp as a conventional automatics, and this is a machine that cries out for a manual transmission that we'll never get, but it's not the abject misery we've come to expect from this combination. Combine that with the Nissan's relatively low curb weight of about 2,650 pounds, and the result is a pleasantly not quick machine that's fine for trolling around urban environments, even if it's not particularly entertaining on a back road after a hard day optimizing the owner's social media footprint. This is the first small Nissan with a CVT that hasn't made us want to rip out the transmission and replace it with a derail from a stump jumper bicycle. Okay for being okay with struts up front, a torsion beam set up in back, and decently quick steering, the kick SI handles okay, rides well, and isn't terribly loud. 20560R16 tires on steel wheels are standard on the S, while the upper models run 20555R17S on alloys. Frankly, with the equipment levels of the SV and SI coming for such slight price premiums, there's little reason to settle for the S. The Kix is what intra-level new vehicles are right now in the real world. There's some neat design and work, good utility, and even some fun in this thing. It perfectly reflects what the world wants right now.